What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Limitless Business Owners Podcast. My name is Andrew Georgie, and I'm here with my co-host of the podcast, Dan Fisher. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, first of all, we want to welcome you. Okay, We're super excited to be on this journey, this business owner journey with you, and help you along the way. Okay, Our whole goal with this podcast, and really our passion in life, is to bring the everyday business owner content and stories they can relate to, and also fresh new perspectives, fresh new mindsets, new thoughts, new ideas, strategies, tactics to help you grow your business. Okay, If you take one thing out of each episode and start implementing it into your life and business today, we promise you're going to start seeing massive growth. Let's hop into the show. Yo, what's happening, guys? I'm here with my boy, Dan Fisher. Dan, what's happening in Pittsburgh? What's up, man? Um, man, we are. It's it's a evening podcast this time, so it's a, a little yeah. bit dark, um, and I'm not used to it. So our brains Either are probably right. fried, and maybe they're just going to get the raw Andrew and Dan today. Yeah, yeah, which is good. They might hear some things they've never heard before. <laughs> right, <laughs> good or bad? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, man, that's good. That's good. How, how's the like? I always, I know I ask a lot, but like the weather in Pittsburgh, I've, I've never been to Pittsburgh. So like, it looks like you're wearing, are you wearing a t-shirt or are you wearing a sweatshirt? Uh, so it's, it's a little deceiving. Uh, my wife yeah. likes to keep the air conditioning up high. So yeah. uh, a sweatshirt is nice. It's actually, let's see, about 81 degrees right now. So it's still warm. Oh gosh. Um, it's like 90. But it's about 67 in here. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's pushing <laughs> like a hundred here in St. Louis. So it's like, yeah, it gets hot here. Real yeah, bad. we're excited to move. We got um, we got most of it underway. We got half the house basically pared down, and um, you know, in the, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be building out in uh, Denver, and then in the meantime, it's gonna take about twelve months. So we're gonna have a, a small apartment that we're just gonna yeah. stash some money, and then be able to go right in while the uh, house closes. So we're really excited about that. That'll be at the end of August, um, and then we'll have all of our masterminds in. Denver or have at least a location there. Uh, that's freaking awesome, man. <laughs> I'm still, I'm stoked for it because I'm like, I've, I've never been to Colorado before. So I'm like, you guys are going to love it. Now I get to enjoy Colorado and I get to see Dan. Yes. So, you know, it's, and for those that listen, that are listening, like Dan and I have never met face to face. We're going to change that here soon though. Like we've been plotting ways to go see each other. Um, it's it's the virtual world now. Yeah. It but could I mean, be worse. Talk. It could be just an avatar, you know, like the future yeah, right. is just going to be an avatar. It could be a panda that you're talking to. <laughs> in the, right. Like in the metaverse, it's just yes, cartoons. Exactly. That's how no. the future office is going to look. But gosh, I mean, Dan, we, we talk daily. I mean, mm-hmm. even the weekends, you know, we text each other. So, yep. um, you know, while we do business together, it's like, we're, we're friends. Um, Absolutely. Too. That's, you know, it, it's just the importance of, I mean, on, online you can do this, you know, um, I would never would have met Dan without that. Um, yeah. But uh, no, and last week I was wearing glasses. I got I got LASIK. Uh, yeah, the day how's it going? The, it, good. The it was the day of the episode drop last week. I got LASIK, which I was freaked out about, which is why I was nerding it up in my glasses last episode. Um, but it's going good T- today. It's a little blurry, but they they said that's 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 normal, right? Just running its course. Yeah, so uh, it's been painless. Um, kind of sensitive to light, but. I I had so like terrible. If, if you guys don't follow me on Facebook, you can see the picture I posted of my eyesight. I did a vision simulator, and my eyesight was so bad. And now I could see twenty twenty. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I'm like mind awesome. blown. Still, I'm like, how? Like who? Who was the first person to go through that? You know, that was a and brave. You were like soul. negative six or something. That was uh, yeah. I was like negative seven and a half. Oh, one eye, eight and the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. Hot crazy. Uh, no, soda had, bottle lenses or whatever dude, they call them. Dude, I had to get, I had to get special, like, tr- like they had to trim down because my glasses were so thick. I had to get pay extra for them oh to trim gosh. it down because I didn't want to look, um, you know, like, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen office space the, uh, <laughs> or bubbles, Milton, Milton, or, or bubbles off of, tr- <laughs> 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 oh yeah. So I was like, no, I can't, I can't be looking like that. I never wore my glasses anyways. So um, mainly contacts, but no, um, we have an awesome podcast today, guys. We are going to be talking about routines and probably in a little bit different of a way than you're used to, right? You're don't think that this is going to be like, Oh, they tell us we need to get a routine to grow in life. Yes, that is true. But 
there's different perspectives on routines and really we have to think about routines as the foundation to our productivity. And really I would say our routines partly are what allow you, which is the foundation, what allow you to receive more in life. Um, and you, you might be saying, Hey, I have, I don't have a routine. I have a lack of routine. And I would challenge that and say, you don't have a lack of routine. You have the wrong routine. Right. Uh, we all have routines. And I know, uh, Dan, I'm sure you've been through this. I know I have, I've might establish a good routine and then I fall off because I start allowing bad habits to reset my routine to back backtrack, backslide yep. a little bit. Um, and when things are going good in life, it's like routines easy. Like it's easy. Like when things are at the high, it's like routines easy, but it's like when things are tough is when you need to hold on to a routine that has good habits. And mm -hmm. we'll talk about some ways to do that. Dan's going to bring some ways to do that strategically. I have some perspective shifts, but I want to go on the science a little bit of routines. I'm not going to get too deep, right? And the reason I say that your lack of routine isn't a lack of routine, it's just the wrong routine, is because everything, our, our, our brains... At a high level, I'm going to dumb it, try to cons like conserve energy, right? Like we want to like self-preserve and it doesn't want to expend energy where it doesn't have to. And we have this overload of sensory information that your brain is constantly filtering to. Me talking to Dan right now, I'm looking at a computer screen and a camera and we're having conversation. My brain is taking, is and I've been in meetings all day too, um, you know, it's been overloaded with information, right? So in the medial tasks, it's trying to conserve energy and it puts certain things on autopilot. And I was talking to Dan before this, it's like, if you think about your morning routine, right? I'm a morning shower guy. I love showering in the morning. Some people are night people. You guys are weird, <laughs> uh, but I shower in the morning. Um, and it, obviously if I like sweat, I'll shower before I go to bed. I'm not I'm not a filthy person, you know, <laughs> but it is tempting though. It is tempting. It is, right? you're like, yeah, I know. Um, but I guarantee when you step in that shower, you do the same things. If you think about it. Oh, I mean, you don't have to think about it cause that's your brain putting it on autopilot after doing it. Yep. Right. So if you actually thought about what you do in the shower, you probably take the same order. Like for me, hair, face, body, just, how, and I, I could all, I could do it without thinking. You know, I know when I, I don't have to take my contacts out anymore, but I got out of the shower and then I did the same things. Put my contacts in first, brushed my teeth, and then did my hair. Always when you brought order. that up, I was like, I was like, I don't have a routine. And you're like, you probably do. And I'm like, uh, I, so I thought about it and you're right. It's your brain just takes over. And yeah. I do, you know, um, it's, it's very similar to yours. And I didn't even realize I was doing it. Yeah, it's that's your brain, and your brain does that on multiple different levels, right? Like that's just an easy one to use. Uh, I would guarantee, even when you eat, you probably do things a certain way. Um, when you go work out, you probably do things a certain yeah. way. When you talk to people, you do things a certain way, and your routine uh, is your brain putting all those things on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Now, I am going to be talking about routine in terms of like things that you need to build into your life on a daily basis that might seem hard now, but our breakthrough later. And it's what, it's what you're going to build in to create autopilot later on. It's not going to, it's going to be like high energy up front, right? It's like, that's why it's tough to create habits because our brain has to expend energy and really concentrate and be intentional on doing it until it becomes a habit and you don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. Right. Now we, when I was learning to do uh, routines, I hated them. I absolutely hated routines. As a matter of fact, I told myself all the time, I was not a guy that did routines. I'm not the guy that is going to do the same thing over and over again every day. But what took me to really come to a realization that I needed to start doing them was every success, successful person was saying, this is, this is what I do in the morning. This is what I do in the morning. Wake up early, wake up early. Like the repetition and the amount of people that I was talking to that were on a high level that I was nowhere near, I'm like, okay, this is a big outlier here. Yeah. This is, this has to be what is putting people 
in the lead. And that absolutely is like waking up early, getting yep. four hours before anyone even wakes up is um, crucial. And then you just start your routines, you know, in that four hour. It's amazing. Oh, but Dan, that's, that's so hard doing that. It's it is so hard. hard. Dan, it's hard. It's like, yeah, of course it's gonna be hard at first. Yep. And then it becomes habit. I, I wake up at 5am without a, without a um, alarm anymore. And it's not um, hard anymore, is it? Mm-mm. No. And, but I'll tell you what, whenever I first started, I went from, I, I naturally wake up at 730 without any routines before that. Um, so it was fairly early. I never really slept in, but like when I went to like 430, it was painful. So like, yeah. obviously you want to do it in a smarter way, wherever you kind of do it in more incremental ways. Um, but yeah, if you can start that um, a little bit more smart than I did, then you're going to be <laughs> much more well off. Which, I mean, we're going to talk about here in a little bit of how yep. to do that, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, and and don't copy someone else's routine because they do it, right? Like, so I'm going to use Alex Hermosi for an example. Uh, he's a very well-known um, business owner, entrepreneur. He started Gym Launch, uh, wrote a book, very well respected. And someone's like, hey, do you work out in the morning? Because most people work out in the morning. He said, yep. no, I work out in the afternoon. He said, my best thinking time is in the morning. So why would I not create thinking time in the morning when my brain's the freshest? And then I'll just work out later. I don't need to, I don't need to be sharp mentally to work out. Right. Like, you know, so, but that's different for everybody, right? Um, I like working out in the morning. You know, it, it kind Same. of kickstarts, and I think there's studies that show, but they, look, he, you don't get to be like, oh, well, Jeff Bezos, he wakes up at 4.30 or Mark Wahlberg, he wakes up at three and he does one workout, eats and then does another workout. So I got to get on Mark Wahlberg's level. It's like, no, maybe you should just like start waking up like 15 minutes earlier yeah, and reading for 10 minutes. <laughs> like, because the reality is, is you're trying to go from level one to level a hundred Right. And you're going to fall flat on your face. Yeah. Start so. with two, two habits and, and, you know, the routine, you know, the first thing you do with the routine is you're, you're picking that time to wake up. Right. Um, and if you're doing your routine at night, like I've never met anyone that actually did a, a routine at night that, ne- that necessarily was doing well. Um, Alex Hormozzi, Hormozzi, that's an interesting story. And that's a good point. I mean, yeah, you're, you're sharp in the morning. Um, and, but I actually put on, on my Facebook one time and it was, it seemed to be a pretty touchy subject about who, like, I was just like trying to cause some issues, you know, some trouble. But I said, <laughs> what is, um, you know, I, I came out saying, Hey, change my mind. Working out in the morning is the best. Um, but there's some people that feel very passionately about afternoon or night and that's fine. Yeah. Just find what works with you, with you. And then yep. make sure that you can kind of get started in the right way too. you know, don't miss out on that morning education. And, you know, it's not even just working out, you know, I, we can go through um, some some things that should be things that should be part of your routine, mm-hmm. you know, and, and your routine needs to be things that, that energize you, yep. right? They give you energy. And I know that's kind of counterproductive to what I'm saying. That's going to cost you energy at first. But once your brain puts it on auto, autopilot, uh, it, it's not as much energy. It's just probably the first month, honestly, that it's like tough. It's, it's really tough to start those habits, start that new routine, right? But your routine should be something that energizes you, okay? Um, and the right routine, it sparks creativity, okay? It sparks productivity, right? I don't know about you, but when, I, and when I'm knocking things out in my morning routine and just daily... Um, and I have that, and I, I'm going to talk beyond just morning routine. Like this sure. is a routine for a day, you know, right. this is, you should have a morning routine baked around a couple of things, but you know, you, you might have certain routines throughout the week for your meetings. Like I only do meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays or what, you know, whatever else, like that's part of your routine too, right? You need to craft that because you need to be the person controlling your time. Right. And I asked people this, I asked someone this probably a month ago. I said, who controls your time? They were, you know taking a phone call while I was meeting with them, texting. I'm like, who controls your time, man? Like, do you control your time or other because I control my time? Right. You know, um, that's just the reality of it. So your routine is you controlling your time and setting time for the things that matter, that spark creativity, spark productivity, 
that here's a, here's one brings you daily rest. Oh, but you're supposed to grind 18 hours a day, right? <laughs> you, you know, you need to rest sometimes so mm-hmm. you can think straight and make good decisions and routines that keep you healthy. Okay. So Dan, I'm going to list some categories, probably what people need to focus on, right? Yep. Um, we're working out to one, right? You should have something daily. If, even if it's a 30 minute walk, like you don't need to go to the gym and be a meathead. Like we're not, we're not asking you to do that, but we are, we are saying, Hey, um, and there's science that backs all this up, right? It's like, you need to have something in your schedule daily that you get your body moving a little bit, at least 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So body, um, your mind, what are you doing for your mind? Okay. And this is probably a multifaceted one. Are you reading? Are you intaking information to learn and grow? Are you, have you built in some thinking time, right? As a business owner, thinking time is so important. We have to create time just to think, right? If that's, if your best thinking time is between nine and 10, you're putting it on your calendar and you're saying, hey, from nine to 10, nobody is talking to me. I, it's my thinking time. That's where I'm creating. Yep. Okay. And then you need downtime. You need to rest your thoughts, right? So newness can be brought about the next day, right? So we have body, we have mind. Um, Dan, I'm probably forgetting some. Eating. And that covers a lot of them, but um, I mean, yeah, food, nice. you know, health wise is, is really body as well. Yeah. Um, time, time is, really time eat. is huge, you know, getting yeah. something that protects your time. Um, oh, so, yeah. So while I was, uh, while you were saying that, I'm thinking, uh, with the, with the workout and with the body, you want to challenge your body, you know, like, um, you know, that's why we work out to go and and better ourselves and get onto that next level. So you want to challenge your body, but in your routines, you want to rest your mind. Um, and then you want to protect your time. And I think those, if you can operate your routines right around those three categories pretty much there maybe there's something else that i'm missing but yeah um you know you could really come out um you know a different person with if you started and do yeah. it for 30 days oh absolutely and you know when you start when when you want to find success what you got to start doing is you got to start elevating your autopilot right so how do i elevate my baseline how do i yep. elevate my foundation because that's the standard at which my life um, falls back to, okay? So if you're wanting to get to the next level, well, you got to learn how to raise your baseline, right? You have to learn how to, and that's through routines. That's through the things that you do every single day. It's not through the big, I hate saying this, but if you haven't done that, you don't deserve the big meeting because you can't handle the big meeting three months from now, Mm -hmm. right? You're not doing the right things. Your actions, your thoughts, your behaviors, your routines, they're they're not deserving of, um, the big reward. And a lot of people want the big reward. They think, Oh, if I just get that one meeting, no, I mean, you start, I, life is just weird where I was actually making a Facebook post about it. Um, today you know, life is just, it rewards you for, for leveling up personally. Like it's not, it's not typically outward things. It's not like, Oh, I'm going to go make 5,000 sales calls today. You know, right. it's, it's, you probably get on those if you haven't leveled up your, you know, that's an easy way to get discouraged. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you might be thinking I need to go do these notes. Like, no, you need to get your life under control. You need to start protecting your thoughts. You need to start taking care of your thoughts, taking care of your body with a solid routine because you're all over the place and your baseline is not deserving of next level results. Yep. And that might be hard to hear. I had to hear that at some point. And even now, like, it's like I could elevate my routine. I'm not preaching. Like I can elevate my routine because I know there's things that life in for me that God wants to reward me with that I'm unable to, like, I'm not at the level to receive them yet. I'm not going because my, my baseline is too low. Okay. How do I level that up? You know, um, the top of the top, they're always thinking about how do I level this up? Right. Yeah. Um, how many somebody, routines do you have throughout the day? Oh, I mean, gosh, morning routine for sure. Yep. Right. Um, daily, like my Mondays are different than my Wednesdays, you know? So it, it really depends on the day, you know? Um, I protect my front end of the week cause I'm fresher for thinking time. Mm-hmm. 
right? I might have a meeting. I try to not have any meetings on Mondays. Dan, we end up talking, but that's <laughs> that's kind of more creating meetings. The roughest like, meeting. You're right. You know, like we're we're kind of brainstorming stuff. Yep. Um, I try taking my meetings for Wednesdays and Thursdays. Friday is another light day. Like, and, and Wednesdays are just grinds typically. Wednesdays yep. are just long days. I have coaching calls, and so it's just a grind. Um, so Thursdays, I know Thursdays. I'm not going to like, uh, I'm, I have zero, zero creating capacity or thought capacity because I'm kind of coming off a long day. So it's mm-hmm. like, why I, I'm not going to make Thursday my, my thinking day. So you can see kind of what I'm I, like my, the, the thought process of how, okay, we have our normal stuff that we do every day, but every day is also different. Like, um, you know, I know Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I'm doing some sort of weightlifting and then Tuesday and Thursday, I'm doing just a 30 minute walk. You know, mm-hmm. nothing, nothing, uh, nothing ground. Like it's not, look, it's not like earth shattering things. You just know, keep just the metabolism the one, moving. Well, and they're just, it's boring stuff. Yep. You know, I whip my Kindle out, you know, in the mornings, you know, I can, I can tell you what I do is I sit down, I read my Bible plan, my devotional, uh, and then I pray sometimes that, you know, it's quick three to five, 10 minutes, just depending on what the day's like. And then I go and I read my book and then I log on my computer. I don't turn my computer on first because I get distracted, you know? So it's like, okay, you would do that every day. Great. Easy now. I I, my body just knows. I just come to my desk and I open my, 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 my apps up that I need. It's like, I don't have to think about it anymore. Yep. You know? So, um, yeah, Yeah, I I know that's roundabout answer, but morning routines, Lunchtime, I eat about the same time every day. That's good. Um, and even the evenings, like I know Wednesday nights, I, I don't get family time because I have coaching calls. So, uh, you know, Monday nights, I'll typically work a, slightly a little bit later. Tuesdays and Thursday nights, I try to make complete, complete family nights, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, that's perfect. I mean, and that just goes to show that, um, cause I'll go through my, my habits and, yeah. and routines as well. Um, but it just goes to show that it, if you do go, go and copy someone, like just use it as a template and then see what works yeah. and take what doesn't work and throw it away. And, um, you know, my, it mine's, it, it can be a simple, some simple stuff. So I use something that's called habit stacking. Um, and what that does is it really just curates a, a list of, you know, routine items, let's say brushing your teeth or, um, you know, showering, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you could actually take that and then stack different things on top of them. So I use that. Yeah. Um, and I use an app. It's actually called uh, Fantastic or Fantastical, something like that. And, and I start in the morning. And my first thing is, uh, you know, I wake up, I check my weight, I wash my face, put lotion on my face, um, make sure I grab my AirPods, which are usually on my desk here, grab my AirPods, go, go downstairs, bring, uh, uh, my can of water and I'll go and, and drink, I don't know, a couple of cups out of that. Then I'll get all my supplements ready. So I'll get all my pre-workout, post-workout, anything else that I'm taking, get all that ready. And then my, the, the big thing that I do after that is I get dressed for the gym as if I'm going to be there. So I get my, my shoes, my shorts, my shirt, get everything on a jacket. If it's cold keys, AirPods, and all my supplements. Because then what I'll do is I sit down, I'll meditate, I'll do uh, another app called Brain Games, and then I'll I'll do my grateful questions. So the same questions that Ed Milet preaches, um, you can look them up. They're just called like the seven questions for the morning routine. Yep. And then uh, that gets me in a good mood, and then I finish it up and go to the gym. So every morning, that's like that's what I do. And if I don't do it, I feel like I'm missing it, and. What's oh, weird yeah. about it is that like my body just naturally goes in that direction. Like I know <laughs> scale, go to the office, get my AirPods. Like it's so weird. I never used to be a, a routine guy, but um, it's really got me. It gets me in the right headspace to start the day. Well, I mean, it, like I said, it, you, you've always had a routine. Every single human being has a routine. Yeah, I guess we're all creatures of habit, I guess, right? We we are. It's just how we're built, yep. you know? Um, so, and that's like, yeah, you know. People say I, I like I, I have a lack. I, I don't have a routine. BS. Right. You have a routine. You know. Uh, you know, like Dan, like you're. You know, I, I'm not. A, I used to not be a person of routine. No, you were. It was just the wrong, wrong routine. And I guarantee <laughs> right. the fact. You know, I guarantee when you start leveling up your routine, you started seeing results in your life. You're like, man, how did that come up? Like, how did I get that? How did yep. this happen? 
you know, everything with Royal, you know, think, you know, all that. It's like guarantee if you put a timeline together that yeah, the routine was here and then, oh, Royal. It, it is exactly what it is. It's exactly it's what it is. It's just, and I was waking up oh, earlier before that too. So waking up early isn't the end all be all, but it was the yeah. routines added into it um, that really helped. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's talk about, uh, I'm going to use two famous people. Uh, yeah. I want to go back to the Jeff Bezos and Mark Wahlberg. I don't know if you've ever seen Mark Wahlberg's schedule, but it's insane. He goes to bed at like 7.30, wakes up at like 2.30. Um, you know, oh, I didn't he, know fits, that. he fits, he fits everything in his, in his schedule. He's like, I'm going to have to have two workouts a day. I, I'm going to go play a round of golf. I also want to go pick up my kids from school in his routine. His, his, he has his family time built in, hmm. in the evenings. I go pick up, I drop my, you know, have breakfast with my kids, drop them off school, then go pick them up later. Obviously I'm sure that routine when he's shooting a movie, you might sway a little bit. Sure. Right. But that's his baseline. When he goes back to it, he's not like, Oh man, I got to wake up at two 30. No, he's like, I, it's, my, it's what we do. It's just what we do. Yeah. Versus someone like Jeff Bezos, I believe he's been pretty vocal about how he, he doesn't wake up till like seven or something like that. So it's like, wait, who's right? Yep. Well, if you want to go off success, Jeff Bezos is right because that dude is uh, is a billionaire. You yeah. know, um, yeah, I know I Mark Wahlberg is pretty right. wealthy too, right? <laughs> but but you know, so it's it's what it's what's right for you. And we have some questions we'll ask you at the end of this podcast for you to kind of. Um, understand, but you know, you know, you, you have to have something that takes care of your mind, your body, family time, um, and uh, rest. Rest is so important. If you don't rest, you will be depleted. Yeah, they say yeah. about like even meditation because um, that was new to me. I used to think you know that was only for you know crazy people, you know, right. um, <laughs> and now I'm part of it. But it they say your brain just never shuts off. So if you get to a point where you can actually focus and shut it off for even five minutes, 10 minutes, oh, it, man. it creates so much potential for the day. Um, so that's how, that's how these simple routines really put you in a better situation. Even though they don't feel like it in the moment, it's like yeah. over time, it's 1% of change. You end up in a total different direct trajectory. Well, I mean, it's just like working out, you know, I know it, there's a lot of correlations between like building a business and like doing like the payoff typically isn't until three, four five months. We, we're such like an instant gratification. We're like, well, if I start a routine today, I better be good tomorrow. Right. It's like, no, no, that's not how this works. This works that you got to put uh, in, and start digging the hole today and then you'll have, you know, a 10 foot hole in three months. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so you got to start. Uh, getting that thing, that's bad thinking. Get it out. It's like, it, you, if I start a routine today, then in 30 days of me doing that consistently, it's going to be easier, a little bit easier. It's still going to be hard, right? Um, but it's also hard having a bad routine because you're having bad results in your life. You yeah. know, so if you want the good results, it's just, it's simple math. You want good results, you can't have bad routine, right? Bad routine does not equal good results. Yeah. Good routine equals good, re you know, good results. So let me give you an example of a bad routine. Yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> when, when I was in college and, and maybe a lot of people are listening, know this, but it, you know, on Thursday it was called thirsty Thursday. So we built a routine of going out on Thursday when we all had class for the most part on Friday. Yeah. Right. So, um, we all go out and we're staying up till 2 AM immediately. If you're doing something healthy or if you're waking up early, that drinking is going to cause you to, you know, sleep in, not go to class. Next thing you know, you've got this terrible routine, but everyone does it, right? It's so hard to stop doing it. Uh, but that's an example of a bad routine. That's one that I participated in probably a lot. I mean, it was Kent State. That was all we did. Um, it was it was better than Friday. So that was, that was where my routines were in college. And I think a lot of people are like that too. So if you're going out and drinking every Friday, Saturday, you know, and then you're wondering why you can never start routines or wake up early, maybe you got to take some of that alcohol and, you know, turn it down a notch. Here's one. I mean, that's so good. It's so true. What about routines in your finances? Ugh. Are you so used to just popping Amazon open and buying whatever the hell you want? Yeah, that's, that's that, a that was a pain point for me. That's a, that, that's, that's a routine. That's something you, it's like you got to train your brain. Routines are just brain processes and that output in actions, right? Um, so it's like, okay, well, maybe I don't have, I, maybe I've, I saw this, maybe you have no spend days. Maybe you build a routine about you don't spend monies on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Yep. You know, so, or, you know, 
maybe as a business owner, you have routines where you build in checking your finances instead right. of ignoring the problem potentially. Hey, I'm guilty of that just as just as much as anyone else. And I have a weird one with the Amazon. Whenever you said that, I'm like, oh man. Um, I'll, 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 I was like, should I say it? Maybe not. But <laughs> the uh, so w- whenever you're a business owner, you have the sleepless nights, right? Uh, and a lot of the times, I, I mean, for the first two years, I would have them probably three or four nights a week where I just wasn't sleeping. Um, so what I would do, I would just open up Amazon and like I would buy something stupid. Like, uh, I don't know. It, a dopamine it, hit, man. It, yeah, I just needed a dopamine hit. And that was something I was like addicted to. Next thing you know, I'm like, I should probably save my money because – we're not making yeah. any sales. <laughs> yeah. You know, but that's where you have to reward yourself, um, you know, in a different way. And that's where a lot of restructuring your routine comes from Yep, is replacing. And the reason why we, we fall into bad routines, like, like, like the thirsty Thursday thing, mm-hmm. um, you got to be with everyone. It's what everyone did peer pressure. And it's like, um, that dopamine hit of being, it's what we, you know, it's fun. Right. Right. But how do you create that dopamine hit for a good routine? And typically up front, you're not, it's not, it's not fun. Mm-mm. So it's like, how do you reward yourself? Even if it's telling yourself, being intentional, telling yourself, like, good job. Like, good job, Andrew. You did, like, you killed it today. Yep. It's a dopamine hit, whether we, re- whether we realize it or not. You know, so uh, you have to start thinking about training your brain to think the right things for your routine. Mm-hmm. Right. I need the dopamine, man. I'm um, trying to look for my phone to see what that app was called. But um, the, the the thing about my routine is I actually needed to instill dopamine in it because I do, yeah, I I, I, I do thrive on it. Unfortunately, um, so what happened was that I had to get an app that's actually designed for your routines and kind of congratulating as you go, and you're just checking off a list. So like physically checking off a list for me is just about enough. Now they have a little added like uh, cartoons and things, mm-hmm. but those kind of things you can, you can instill if you really need some, or maybe set a reward for yourself, uh, to get you started. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. And as a business owner, uh, your, your routine is, I would say your most important thing, um, in your, it's the most important way to take care of yourself. Yep. It is. Right. And, and you have to look, I cannot stand there's if like, if you want to see me get fired up, I can't stand that people say, well, I just give, that's what I, I'm just selfless. Hmm. You're an idiot. <laughs> you're, you're a bona fide idiot uh, because you can't give them an empty cup. Mm, and I will right. go toe to toe with anyone that wants to argue with me on that for, yep. for real. Um, it, be, because I see it like people wear it like a badge of honor. Like I don't take care of myself because I'm just too busy giving to everybody else. Right. It's that's, that's dumb. It's dumb. It's you exhausting. Can giving, you can be giving 10 times more. And that's why it ticks me off because it's actually selfish. It's like you feel so good because you think you're doing so much for other people that you're not willing to be disciplined enough to take care of yourself to be able to give 10x more to people. Yep. It's probably the most fired up I've gotten on a podcast right there. <laughs> I it love it. Let's get it. Up, Let's get you fired up more I often. Can't. It just, it, it really like, and I've, see, I've heard people preach that. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, get off your high horse, go take care of yourself and go give more to people, you know? Yeah. They're that, looking like, for that's accolades. Our job a, I mean, yeah, they're, but they, it's like, uh, I don't know the right, right word for it. They, it's like, it's like, what do you, you're a leader. And then you model that and then it just starts multiplying. Then mm-hmm. it, like now you have an organization built off people that are just depleted. Like I'm just all about giving to other people. <laughs> and then, and then they get home and they are just done. They can't yep. take care of their family. Not, you know, like they have, they, they have no energy. It's like, take care of yourself first. And I guarantee you can give more on the impact points where it matters. You will have way more energy. Absolutely. And, uh, we've, we've all been there. You know, we, we all, we all know what I'm talking about. Whenever you take care of yourself, you do feel energized to go give more to other people. And like, that's as a business owner, that's what your job is, is you, uh, you have to be a leader. You have to, you, 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 I mean, you are taking care of your employees, taking care of customers, clients, um, the vendors, you know, that's just your job is to give to other people. But if you just constantly give, 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 you have nothing to like, nothing to give that like you will run out yep. and you will run into a wall. I think a lot of people think that way. And I think 
we uh, we are trained in a way that way. Um, you know, there's maybe it's, it's what, yeah, society. Maybe it's like school and teachers, and uh, you know, it's it's coming from a scarcity mindset, which I would say yes. like sixty percent of people are in. So you're almost. I'll challenge that, Dan. I think it's more. <laughs> it, yeah, it might be. It's where right. I'm from, though, too. I mean, they do call it the one percent. So who's who's everyone after that? <laughs> Is it? Yeah, right. And um, you know, if it's ninety percent, then maybe that's what the more accurate number. But like these these people are trained to do this in society, and and I've done it. You know, I've had to train myself yeah. out of it. Um, because I everyone tells you give give give, and it's wrong to take. But as a business owner, you actually want to make sure that you're in a good position. Cause guess what? I've been there where I've I'll basically made my company a charity and people have made tons of money off of what I've given them. And then in the meantime, I resent them. So now I resent my clients, my employees, and because I couldn't get into the right money mindset, which is, you know, I've had to go through different routines and habits to get out of. Um, yeah. But you know, if someone's listening to this and they're in that same situation, like, there's definitely, I don't want to say a cure, but there's definitely ways around and ways above well, that like mindset block. Let's think about this. So I'm going to use that example, Dan. Sure. And I know we're not talking about routines, but this is just too good to pass That's out. okay. Okay. So you started giving um, to everybody else except for yourself. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you motivated to grow your company at that point? No. In the beginning, you, you start not- out and then you're like, and then it's completely drop off. Well, I mean, you're, you're not motivated because you're not, you are not seeing the reward. Everyone else you're is. Right. You're not though. So you're, right. you will, you're, you're not getting that. When you pay yourself, you get that dopamine hit. You're yep. Like, Damn. I like that. I want some more of that. You know? Um, so I used to make sales and the it reverse never side would of that matter. Is, okay. Let's say you pay yourself first, mm-hmm. right? Yep. The right amount. Okay. And then. You, now you're motivated to make more. Okay. Here's, here's the catch. You go make more and now you can pay your employees more. Right. Right. All because you, and this is a concept. Um, I joined RTA syndicate not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And one of the dudes posted in there, multi-millionaire business owner, high level guy. He said, you need to give to yourself first. He said, I've always given to myself first. Oh, but now I don't know his name. I don't remember his name, but Let's call him Tim. Tim, you're so selfish. Is Tim selfish? Or is Tim, does he have a, multiple employees that he's changed their lives and probably changed clients' lives? Yep. So get out of here with the noble crap. Like, I'm just selfish. Yeah, I'm just give everything. Yeah, we need to have a heart of giving. Yes, you need to give. That's yep. our job as leaders business to give. But you got to have something, have a routine, something that energizes you and fills you up daily because you need to give. And yep. if you're not taking that discipline, hate saying that, you're a loser. Sorry yep. about it, but yep. just how it is. It's, it bug. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I get fired up. I, that's <laughs> one thing. Ask Jordan. Ask Jordan. Jordan would be like, he gets. That's what he gets fired up about. It's like that's <laughs> because I think it's. I, I think it's piss poor leadership. I can't stand terrible leaders that don't care about other people. They're so noble and hop on their high horse. Yeah, I mean, if they're riding that high horse for myself. sure. I don't take care of myself. It's like, what are you? Are you proud of that? <laughs> I don't rest at. It's because it's a. It's a society like you got to work. 20 hours a day and are there times yes those should be outliers though like if you live to work i I don't know what there's something a screw loose if you're like i can't wait to work 20 hours a day like michael was like i hate saying this like how do i make more and work less you know it doesn't mean i'm not willing to put work in Mm -hmm. right like there's a difference there um yeah 20 hours of work could mean completely at nothing you know it's just yeah just busy work yeah. Oh, this is good. Yeah. But yeah, not habit related, but it's, it's just, you know, when I was learning, it was, I had no idea coming in to business ownership, like what to properly pay myself. And honestly, I never heard, um, pay yourself first until like a year into it. Mm-hmm. Um, because there was a time when I'm building it, like there was a time I, I could not pay ourselves. Like we couldn't pay anyone. Uh, so it was really just us two as you know, myself and a yep. former partner. So like we're building things off the ground. So there are some times where you, you like, you might come across like, Hey, maybe I do have to skip a paycheck, but it really should not be the standard. Trust me on that. I've been there. I've had to skip 
yeah. a good amount of paychecks. And next thing you know, like there's hard conversation after hard conversation, and then you have to restructure businesses. Um, so it doesn't come with its other challenges after that. Yeah. It, it, it seems like the right thing to do, you know, and I, I'm not saying it's not, I'm sure there's an op- a, a circumstance and situation where it is the right thing to do. You know, um, sometimes as a leader, we do take the sacrifice first. Sure. Right. Um, but on the flip side, if you start off on the wrong foot and have this wrong thinking, this, it is scarcity mindset. It's like this wrong thinking of like, I need to give before I take. It's like, no, I take a little bit first and then get in. So you have enough to give, you know, yeah. um, you can't make an impact if you have nothing to give. And, right. and, and that's just reality, you know, as a leader. So, but routines, yeah, routines, you need a routine. Um, no, I mean, it, it really is sort of kind of related, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, especially as a business owner or you run an organization of some sort, you, or heck, even if you're a manager someplace, you need to model the behavior and that's having a routine. And if you want your team to go to the next level, it starts with you. Yep, it you does. Know, it starts with uh, what are the finer, typically the path to the next level is found in the finer details of your actions, right? And that's not the actions typically related. I would say all actions, you know? So if you're thinking, hey, I'm good at sales, you can get better. Look at the finer details of your sales calls. You can Mm -hmm. get better. How are you opening? How are you closing? What questions? Maybe you can ask question a different way. Finer details, right? If you're advertising, what are the finer details? Maybe I need to use one, one different word in there can change the copy and the, and the selling capacity of it, right? right? So the finer details. And that's, there's direct and there's indirect. Your routine's an indirect um, indirect way to level up, right? It, mm-hmm. It's linked, there's correlation, but what are the finer details? Okay, am I, am I eating right at the right times? Am I taking care of my body in the right way? You know, what am I doing? It, maybe I changed that workout right there a little bit. Okay, maybe I... Maybe I need to slow down a little bit in my reading, so I t- into, you know it's always found in the finer details. I don't know what that is for you, but um, you have to be disciplined with your routine. Yep. So, Dan, anything else before I ask these three questions? I need to ask yourself. Ask um, themselves. So one thing that um, uh, Andy Andy Frisella preaches, and he's in RT leads RT. Yes. And. Um, he, he does the 75 hard, right? And that's where I really got started with routines, that and reading the book Atomic Habits. Um, but what he preaches is that if you if you use your, your routine as your tool to get back on track, right? Just like you said, it was the baseline. And his baseline is 75 hard. And that's okay. Like, he, you know, two workouts a day, cutting out alcohol. Great. Because you know what? 75 hard literally puts you in on track to where you need to be results yep. wise anyways. Absolutely. So like if you want like a very perfect routine and you want something that's going to put you on the next level, 75 hard, go ahead and do it. Um, but realistically, if you, if that's something that you haven't been able to do or you keep, you know, failing, um, find your own routine and use that as your baseline, use that as your tool for if, if you feel like you're getting into a spot where you're, there's, you know, depression and exhaustion, pull back for a second, go back to your baseline routine and start yeah. it over. Your routine is a tool in your pocket that yep. you use daily. Right. It's what it is. It's how do I keep myself sharp? Why well, I have tools yep. for that, you know? Um, and Andy talks about this. He talks about how 75 hard is a tool in his life mm-hmm. he uses. Some people say it's a way of life. It's like, no, it's a, like when he starts to slip, he uses, when he starts, his routine starts to slip, he uses 75 hard as a tool to get his routine back right right so um very very smart way actually and uh um so yeah that's so good dan yep so good so three questions to ask yourself about your current routine um and dan you might have more even so three maybe more i don't know i have three dan might have one i don't know um i don't know we'll see what what comes up yeah i i know there's one thing that I'm going to add that I know we need to talk on. So okay. there's four questions I'm going to ask. Okay. Perfect. Um, first one is, does your routine, or, do, or I would say it first person, does my routine energize me? Okay. Does it give me energy? I'm not talking when you first start a routine. I'm talking like 
you know, like when you work out, it, it gives you more energy, actually. You have clear thoughts. You have better focus. So you have to analyze, does my current routine, is it best serving me? Does it, does it energize me? Okay. Is my routine healthy? Okay. Staying up till 1 a.m. and sleeping until 10, is that healthy? You mm-hmm. know? Is my routine taking care of, you know, my health mentally, physically, emotionally? Okay. And the third one is if I had someone, maybe someone was shooting a movie of my life, would I be proud of my routine? Would I be proud of that showing to millions of people? Right. Um, And then the fourth one is, is my routine boring? And Dan, we talked about that before, before we started. So what, do they, what should they do if their routine's boring? Hmm. That, this is a tough one. Uh, it's probably different for a lot of people, but you almost need to write down every single one, every single thing that you do in your routine. Whether Let's say you do one routine a day. Some people will do multiple, uh, but let's go simple. Um, and you only do like a morning routine. And I guess if you're doing it and it's boring – Maybe that's a good thing. Like, so you need to assess, like, is this something that's actually helping me? Um, or am I just need, needing to adjust where I actually like things, like fall in love with the boring things? Because that's, yeah. I mean, think about I'm an mundane. athlete. They're in, they're in the gym seven days a week, twice a day, sometimes three times a day doing the same thing. Like, you know, as a pitcher, you're probably working out your one arm the same, same way pitch. every time. Yeah, same pitch. Uh, Kobe Bryant talked about that. Kobe Bryant talked about free throws. Well, not even, yeah, free throws, but someone went and he, he's talked about how he has one workout before anyone ever wakes up. He said, so like over a span of 10 years, I had 10,000 more workouts than anybody else. Um, and he said, someone watched his workout and it's just like basic. Like, I don't remember like middle school basketball where you just like did dribbling drills and like, Mm -hmm. honestly, boring stuff, you know, like practicing layups, like all Kobe did was basic stuff. He wasn't like, and Kobe said, yeah, that's, that's like, that's, that's where we, it's boring. It's not flashy, but I'm going to be the best at the basics. Yep. It's a foundation for everything. So like, that's where, that's what Dan's talking about. It's like, it's okay to being, ba- it's practice the basic, basic stuff daily, master the basic stuff. Right. And what I'm not saying is like, okay, let's say you have a workout. Let's say you've been going to the gym for the past three years. Right. Um, and now you want to change it up a little bit. Right. Maybe we'll go try CrossFit because mm-hmm. maybe the gym was getting boring for you. Replace it with something that's going to challenge you, right? Right. Um, and typically what challenges you, right, is something that's harder because you're not used to it. You're still keeping the routine. You're, might, you're changing the finer details within it to make it less boring. Yep. And, and there's, there's a difference between being bored and um, I have dislike, but I'm not sure if that's the right word. Um, you know, if it's something that's not helpful, I guess. So bored yeah. and not helpful is, is something you want to assess because guess what? Meditation can be boring. Um, you know, working out can be boring. Most routines can be boring. So if you can list out something that maybe doesn't work, maybe you can just replace it. Cause that's what I've done a couple times. Like, uh, on the app, I don't necessarily get to check, check off this one routine. Cause I really just, I'm just kind of tired of it. I, don't, I, I skip it yep. almost every time. That's usually a good sign you need to replace it. Um, yes. Unless it's you know something that's really going to be meaningful. One thing I struggle with is social media posting. And I would hit it and I would get to the point, I'm like, I'm going to skip it. So I didn't actually want to take that one off because that's a, that's a really effective one. But yep. I did take off something that was meaningless. I can't even remember what it was um, that I was skipping as well. So you, there's two different things. One was just a a hard and I didn't want to challenge myself in the morning. And the other one was not helpful. So I took that completely off. And, and, and like, there's two things, sorry, this is just sparking more. Um, Yeah. You know, with that, I, and this is one thing I've told myself lately is like, um, of course there's certain results that we want from our routines, right? We want clear minds. We want better focus. We want better productivity. We want to look better. We want to think faster, you know? Um, Those are results that, you're typically trying to shoot for in your routine, but there comes a point in your routine where you've achieved those things. So what what should ha- what should happen? Do you stop? It you shouldn't. Right. I think it's like no, this is just things that I do. Right. This is just the way I live life, 
and it starts becoming the way you live life. But you have to tell yourself, like, uh, you know, I we have a l- little girl. She's 10 months old, you know, mm-hmm. me and Jordan. And it's, uh, I think, like, what do I want? How do I want her to live her life? Right. You know? So it's like the Georgies, we, like, this is what we do. You know, it's just like, we're not like everybody else. You know, like, we 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 take care of our bodies. We take care of our minds. You know, we go to church, you know, we do certain things that I know that's not for everybody, but you know, this is just how we live life. Right. I'm not judging anyone that you could, you do what's best for you. You know, mm-hmm. this is just what the Georgies do. Right. And it's not, I detach it from the results. It's not, I, I don't work out for a six pack. I work out because it's what we do, you know, just what we do. Right. The rewards and, seem to come in, in, more areas than just what you're doing at that time. Yeah. So if you're working out and you're, and if you're doing a combo of routines, really you're going to see the rewards in your business in your family in your time in your priorities. Like, yeah, you're going to have it. You're next thing you know, you're going to have a whole new friend group. You know, you're yep. like, how did I even get a new friend group out of just doing routines? Yep. It, well, at the gym or, at, you know, posting on Facebook, like you're going to end up moving. Like I'm moving to Denver for, right. <laughs> you know, just based off of a few things that we've done. And, um, yeah. it, it's just, a, it's a crazy thing. It's, it's simple. Um, the hardest part is realizing that the rewards coming, come from somewhere else. Um, yeah. but they also come in the, in, you know, mindset, fitness, health. Well, I think your routine shapes that. Yeah. You know, right. routines, because guess what? If your, your routine's right, you're like intaking new information, which shapes your thoughts. So it's like, you are actually creating a better fir- version of yourself through routines, but yep. You know, the reason why I say I detach myself from the result, like I, when I, when I want to get like more excited about something, yeah, of course I'm going to think about the result, but then I detach from it. Cause it's like, it's just the process. Like we're in life, man. You know, like this is just life and everything's a journey. Everything's a process. Nothing happens overnight. So it's like, if this is just what we do, I'm going to trust the process that's going to bring the right results. It's probably going right. to bring more than what I'm actually thinking. So like, yeah, do I want a six pack? I, I mean, no, actually, that's not not something that I want. I'm like, I don't, I don't care about that. Um, you know, I want to be just in shape. You know, it's just my like goal. I might have a different goal five years from now. You know, maybe before I'm thirty. You know, I'm thirty five, thirty six. Maybe I'm like, hey, I want a six pack. You know, <laughs> right now it's not it's not a priority for me. You know, um, but I, I guess what I'm saying is. I take my routine and I break it down to actions that I'm like, I'm going to trust the process. Just something that we do. I'm going to trust the process. The results are going to come, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, Cause that takes my eyes off that instant gratification. Like, Oh, I'm doing it for this reason. It's just how we do life. Right. Right. So Dan, any parting wisdom? I feel like I had something and it slipped. Um, No, no, no. Um, (laughs) Hmm. But uh, okay, so so yeah, just like I was saying before, like the the rewards f- feel tough to grasp because it's you know you're working for yourself six months in the, ahead of time from now. Um, mm-hmm. So really, it's a hard thing to start. But if you can believe that you're going to come out better, just like a general better, I hate that it's not specific or anything. But you know, yeah, yeah. you'll be better in some other things, but in specific specific things. But right now, it's a general better like start doing a morning routine with five items on it and then add on to it yep start simple you know walk around the block walk a mile run a mile you know you're gonna start finding yourself wanting to challenge yourself and that's where those things naturally come it's easy to talk about fitness like that but um i think people should challenge themselves with routines too i love it i feel like we can talk about this i'm sure there's more we can probably add but no, this is, I think will definitely help a lot of business owners. Look, don't, don't rely on the excuse that I don't have time for a routine. Right. Don't roll, you know, don't fall back to the excuse. Like I just have a lack of routine. No, you have a routine. It's just a bad routine. Okay. You need to have a routine that energizes you so you can go give more, right? So we can go give more to our employees. We can go give more to our clients. We can go give more to the world as a leader. Like you have an obligation, like to me, like whenever, like that's whenever you take on responsibility like that, if you're a leader in any capacity, you have an obligation to all those around you to be the best version of yourself. Right. And you need to ask, start asking the questions, how do I become the best version of myself? And that does start with some self-care. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, you know, think about, I think about the dragsters, 
in HRA, I think, you know, it's like they have, they take care of the machine so it can go output and win races. That's what we're doing. Got to take care of the machine to go output and win some races, races. So rock and roll, Dan. Well, like always, man, it's always real. I love our conversations. So much for a shorter one. Right. We said it was going to be a 30, 45 minute. And, but we said right before we're like, Hey, uh, if we get in a good conversation, we're just going to let it ride. And we let it, we let it ride. Absolutely. Worth it. We're at an hour. Yep. All right, man. Peace out. See you, man. Hey, if you haven't rated or reviewed the show yet, please take two to three minutes to do so right now on whatever platform you listen on. It really helps the show rank better when people are searching for new podcasts to listen to. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook where we post daily clips from the episode. And then we're just going to ask you to share those clips, right? You never know who of your friend, friends are going to see that clip and then they're going to start listening to the episode and then their life changes because they hear something that really helps them overcome uh, a challenge that they're experiencing in their business. Um, It's really going to help them create breakthrough in their business and become limitless. Also, one last thing. Right now, we are offering a free seven-day trial into our Inner Circle group, Limitless Business Owners Inner Circle. And inside this elite group, you get to learn how you can experience immense, consistent growth inside your business where you learn the strategies and tactics to grow your business, right? Surround yourself with like-minded people, other business owners that are experiencing what you're experiencing that are going through it right now that you can build key relationships relationships with and learn from. And also some people ahead of you that can also teach you something that's going to help you overcome something in your business right now. And then last thing, you can leverage the strategies and tactics it takes to build your dreams and fulfill your purpose. Talk soon.